I recently purchased a set of RCX 2206-2250KV motors, uh, and I've been doing some thrust testing to try and figure out what is the best prop to put on these motors. Uh, there is an RC Groups thread discussing this data, and you can also download this spreadsheet from that thread. I'll link to it down in the video description. Uh, but I did want to talk about some of the highlights here with you. Um, I, I haven't seen any thrust data for these numbers other than the data put out by RCX th themselves. So uh, I thought I'd run through some props I had available and see what the results were. I'll start the discussion with the HQ6045. Uh, that is the... I think it's the best prop to fly on 3S for me. Uh, a five inch prop may be slightly more agile because you have a lower motor to motor distance on five inch than on six inch. You can use shorter arms, um, but the difference in thrust is so extreme compared to the 6045 versus even the, the bullnose props on five inch that it just feels so much more lively. Uh, once I flew it, I didn't want to go to anything less. Um, that, that's less of a difference, I think, on 4S, where the 5-inch props can make a lot of thrust. But on 3S, you don't have a ton of power to begin with, and so you really need to get the most out of the prop, and the 6045 did the trick. Uh, however, the HQ6045s are darn expensive. Uh, I end up paying about $2 a prop when you factor in shipping, ordering about 40 bucks at a time, and I'll go through those in a couple weeks, and it gets really expensive. So... I did a review of the King Kong 6040 prop where I flew that prop and felt like it was really soft and a little underpowered compared to the HQ6045. I was really surprised to find on the test stand that it made nearly as much thrust. It's hard to believe that, so for a quadcopter, you'd have a difference of about 200 grams of thrust. And it's really hard to believe that, that the difference of just 200 grams of thrust would really make that much difference uh, in flight feel. Maybe it was all in my head, but the, the 6040 felt less locked in, less precise, and less controllable uh, than the 6045. And I don't know if that's all in my head or if that's some difference in the, like the 6040 is a softer prop, it's more flexy, and maybe there's a difference there that is not being shown on the test bench. But on the test bench, the King Kong 6040 does a very respectable job, 745 grams of thrust compared to 809 gram at almost the same efficiency. And uh, I got to say, at 25 cents a prop versus $2 a prop, it sure seems compelling. I just didn't like it when I was flying it. I don't know what to tell you about that. Now, I've got a bunch of these 5-inch props that I tested on 3S, but I'm not going to dive too deep into those numbers because I think most people are, are flying 4S, and most people who are flying 5-inch props are flying 4S. Some people, I don't mean to disrespect anybody out there who's on 3S flying 5-inch props. You guys are more than welcome to dig into the numbers, but I suspect that's, some, that's not something people would like to like hear me talk about uh, for minutes on end. So let's go to the exciting 4S action. Um, up at 4S, well, first of all, the HQ6045 and the King Kong 6040 both blew the crap out of my uh, ESC. It's a 20 amp little b ESC. I say blew the crap out of it. It didn't take any damage at all. I think the little b is rated for 10 seconds at 30 amps, and this test did not last that long, but after the test was done, I definitely smelled a little bit of enamel smell coming from the motor. The motor was way too hot, and this is way too much load to put on the motor, 30 amps, way too much. Now, I do know that there are people who fly 6045 on 4S with this motor, and we know that the motor will unload in the air and will draw fewer amps uh, in the air than it does on the test bench. So that's a fact. Also, on the in the air, you've got moving air in a way that you don't have necessarily on the test bench. So this is a viable prop combination, although you will not get a great you'll get very long flight time out of it. It is a viable combination in, in, in the air. Personally, I'm not going to fly it because I feel like it's too close to the edge. But if you need you know, absolute performance, this will do the trick. Um, it made 1,100 grams of thrust, maybe even as much as 1,200 grams. Uh, I'm not sure. I was kind of freaking out once I started smelling the enamel. I didn't I know it get made at least 1154. That's the last number I saw. I think I also may have seen it break 1200 briefly. It's an amazing amount of thrust uh, for, for this prop. 
450 watts though and boy you better have a battery that can handle it your battery better be able to supply i would say in real life 90 amps without breaking a sweat because uh, it's going to need it king kong 6040 very similar results i did not run it up to thrust once i saw how many amps it was pulling i shut the test down however it should be pretty similar here i think it's going to break a kilogram no quite no question now as for the 5 inch props, uh, I'll talk about the HQ5045 Bullnose first of all. Um, I don't think this is a very good prop. It made 933 grams of thrust, which is respectable. In fact, that's the most thrust of any of the 5 inch props. But it did it at 2 grams per watt, pulling 27 amps. You could run a 6045 prop and pull the, almost the same current and get 1100 to 1200 grams of thrust. So I don't know why you would run this prop if you just absolutely cannot run a six inch prop and you need the absolute most thrust you can get, then run this prop. But if you go down to a Gemfan 5040, right? Or an HQ 5040, you get a hundred grams less thrust roughly and way, way more efficiency, way better flight time. So I personally, am, I think this is a pretty bad prop. Uh, it has a slightly more top end, but pulls way too much current. And also, again, if you're running a 1300 or 1500 milliamp hour battery, you're not going to feed this prop anyway. You're not going to feed this motor with this prop. That's going to be your limiting factor, and you're going to have to pull, pull down to a more efficient prop anyway. I made a bullnose prop out of the King Kong 6040 by cutting it down to 5 inches on a jig. And once I saw on 3S how much current it pulled, pulled 17 amps, I could just tell that it was going to be through the roof and did not bother testing it on 4S. So I expect that it, it had very similar results to the 5045 bullnose. I expect that it would produce very similar thrust results, uh, pulling about 20 to 27 to 30 amps, making about 900 grams of thrust. Um, but if you look at the Gemfan 5040, 843 grams of thrust, Gemfan 5045, not that much difference, 870 grams of thrust, slightly less efficient, and the HQ5040. They're all right in the same ballpark with very similar efficiency and very similar thrust numbers. Any one of these is going to do a, a just fine job for you. Um, I did a test on the Gemfan 5045 Bullnose, which is an all-star prop in this, uh, in this sort of category. Um, many people think this is their, their very favorite prop. Uh, and I was a little surprised. First of all, I didn't test it on 4S yet. I just don't have a 4S battery charged up and I haven't got around to it. Don't sweat that too much. Uh, if we look at the 3S test results though, we can see that it makes 500 or made 580 grams of thrust, which is, if we compare that to the Gemfan 5040, it's 30 grams more thrust than the Gemfan 5040, which is not that much more. It's somewhat less efficient. So it, it pulled, uh, around 14 amps compared to around 12 amps. It, it's interesting that people seem to think this is such an amazing prop because on the bench, it doesn't seem to be that much different from the Gemfan 5040, uh, but, or, or, or the Gemfan 5045, Gemfan 5045, the standard 5045, not bullnose, made 570 grams compared to 580 grams, 13.2 amps, based on 13.85 amps. It, it, it's interesting, and it makes me wonder whether there is some flight characteristic of this prop that comes out in the air that is not obvious on the bench. Uh, and I don't know, you have to fly it to find out. But um, the other thing that I don't have is I don't have a three blade 5040, which is another prop that is becoming very popular. I would love to get a chance to test that. I just don't have one at the moment and haven't tested it. So, uh, of all of these props, though, uh, the one that I am settling on is the King Kong 5040. Uh, the King Kong 5040 uh, produces completely respectable thrust numbers, slightly lower thrust than the Gem Fan or the uh, HQ, right? Just slightly, at slightly worse efficiency, but again, 25 cents a prop, you can't really argue with that. And, uh, and I have flown it enough. I don't know if it's the smaller prop being a little stiffer, or if it's the fact that we're on 4S, so you got more sort of raw power to deal with, and the prop itself has less of a contribution to the handling, or maybe it's just all psychosomatic. I didn't like the King Kong 6040, even though its bench numbers are very similar to the 6045. 
but I, I the King Kong 5040 on 4S, I have no complaints about, and it certainly is the right price. Um, so that's that's the, my favorite currently uh, here, and I would not hesitate to recommend anybody to give it a try, uh, especially given how cheap it is. Uh, you know, it won't cost you much to give it a try, and if you like it, you could certainly save a lot of money. Uh, and maybe switch out to a slightly more aggressive prop on race day, like the Gemfan 5045, or maybe the 5045 Bull Nose, or maybe a three blade. I don't know. Anyway, hope that's all helpful. Hope that's informative. Check out the thread on RC Groups. The link is down in the video description below. And as always, happy flying.